I'm Joey Williamson. I'm a horticulturist with the Clemson Extension Home and Garden Information Center. Today we'll be looking at some woodland ferns that are easy to grow. There are many beautiful and interesting ferns that are popping up now, some in just full bloom. And the first one I'd like to show you is the cinnamon fern. The cinnamon fern has these fertile spores that come up, fertile fronds that come up bearing their spores, which is rather unique for a fern. Most ferns will make their spores, and you know, they spread by spores, not seeds. The spores will be in little packages on the back sides of the leaves. But in this fern, this genus, they have sterile fronds and fertile fronds. There are cinnamon colored hairs on these fronds that give it the look of a big tall cinnamon stick. These ferns would like to have moist soils and often they grow near stream banks or near bogs or in some other wet area near a lake. They can tolerate some sun if they've been given adequate water, but usually they like moist, rich, well-drained soils that have adequate moisture to keep them growing and to prevent the fronds from dying out. The cinnamon fern is a very handsome fern. It does uh, lose its leaves in the winter with the first frost, so it is a deciduous fern, but this is one of our bigger, better native ferns to plant and an excellent addition to your garden. This fern we're visiting now is the Northern Maidenhair Fern. This is a very delicate leafed little fern that does spread by underground stems called rhizomes, so by putting in a few plants, eventually they'll cover many square feet as long as the soil remains moist and is well drained. The best way to plant something like this if you purchase at a garden center is to make sure you improve the soil in the bed using your own compost or composted pine bark to loosen up the heavy clay soils. That's the key to having good plant growth is healthy soil. These plants need to stay moist during the summer because if they do become too dry, the little petals will begin to, to burn and senesce and then they won't look as good toward the end of the summer. This is a wonderful addition to the garden. It's best in most shade, mostly shade to partial shade great plant. The last fern we'll visit today is the autumn fern. This fern starts out as young fiddleheads that are very coppery red color. They're slowly expanding. Now this comes from a particular genus of plants that are indigenous to Asia. So these are not natives here. This comes from a very tough and adaptable genus of plants. And these ferns are some of the most drought tolerant plants I have ever seen. Let's move on to look at some that are a little more advanced. On this autumn fern, the fronds have become taller and they've almost totally unfurled. We can still see much of the coppery red color on the foliage and this combines extremely well with many of the companion plants that'll be green that you'll plant around it. Next, we'll visit a plant that's uh, more mature. Here we have a more mature or fully advanced autumn fern showing the splendor and how tall it is. These are absolutely gorgeous shrubs and as, as I said, they're very drought tolerant. You do want to really improve the soil when you're planting ferns. Make it a rich soil. Use your own compost. If you don't have a compost pile, buy composted pine bark to mix with the soil. Keep them well watered, especially until they're established and they should do absolutely wonderful in your yard. For more information on gardening, landscaping, insect and disease problems on your plant, visit the Home and Garden Information Center website at www.clemson.edu slash hgic.